death. That's what she wished. That's what she wanted. It's what she prayed for for hours and hours as she couldn't see. She continued to bleed. She couldn't hear. For protection of victims, we're going to call her Lily Smith. 10.34 p.m. BYU College and I'm going to go for a run. I have finals week this week. I'm stressed. I'm going to go run. We talked about the benefits of running. 10.43. Sean hides behind Bush. So Sean jumps behind Bush. Sean pulls Lily into the bush and beats her with a granite rock from the Provo River Trail. Rapes her. Leaves her there for dead. 10.59, less than half an hour from the beginning of her run, the police have arrived to find her inches from her life. That, that's Lily, that is, that is the situation she has found herself in, alone in the woods, next to the river, cold, alone. Officer Brian Taylor, second month on the job as a special victims detective. That's my dad. That's my dad. He is one of the strongest people I know. He dedicates his life and everything went in him to save these people. But he can't do it alone. It is not a one man thing. Megan Thorpe. Also for protection we're calling her Megan Thorpe. Megan Thorpe is a victim's advocate. While Lily was in the hospital, Megan arrived at 11.17 p.m., right as Lily got to the hospital. Lily gets the phone call. Lily jumps in her car with her backpack full of four different sizes of underwear, three different sizes of sweatpants, and an extra large sweatshirt. You've been a victim. You've lost everything. You're standing there in a pair of paper underwear and a gown. Megan's there. Megan's ready. Megan is, what do I need to do to help you? Megan carries with her a bag of black, smooth stones, gives it to the victim and says, this is yours. This is something you can hold on to. You treasure this. You do whatever you need. This is yours. This is for you. Presence. A victim is someone who's been victimized, obviously. Well, within the police department, there are dedicated people such as Megan and my dad who are there for the victims. They are a victim's advocate. Their jobs are to be present, they are to provide, and they are to protect. They are there for the victim. So we talked about presence. Megan is there. Walks into the hospital room to find Lily alone. She says, hi, Lily. My name is Megan. What do you need? We've talked about how Megan carries things with her. But we also haven't talked about what Megan gives beyond what is taken. Megan gives support. Megan provides. There are, when we talk about providing, we talk about resources, we talk about friendship, we talk about someone there. But what you don't understand is Megan's the only one there for Lily. While Sean now has to be charged, arraigned, there has to be a discovery, there has to be a plea, there's a preliminary hearing, a pre-trial motion, a trial, a post-trial motions, sentencing, appeal. These are all the stages that Sean gets to go through. There are easily 50 people at each one of these things there for Sean. Sean, who has left victims in his past before. Sean, who gets all the attention. Well, Megan, if it weren't Lily, if it weren't for Megan, is alone. There's no one there to watch over her. That's the why we have people like Megan. Megan saw that Lily went to counseling every other day through the entire trial. Megan came to Lily with a weekly report that my dad wrote for her saying, this is where we are. This is what we have found. This is the evidence we have. This is what is going on. Protect. A victim isn't just a sexual assault victim, it's an abuse victim. There are so many different victims that need protection. There are so many victims left alone who don't have someone there for them. So you have people like Baca. Heck yeah, they are a victim's advocate group. 
The bald guy here in St. George saved my friend's life. His dad nearly beat him to death, but Baca was there. They came riding up on their Harley motorcycles and their leathers, and they said, that's enough. They took Cody to school every day, all through junior high and high school. They had someone with him when he wasn't in a supervised building every day. You have the Dove Center, the Center for Women. They also are a victim's advocate. They have someone there to talk to. They have groups. They have clothes. They provide computers for students who need help. DROC, it's a campus, obviously, campus-driven victim's advocate. Places that need protection are the courtroom at home, in the police department, and counseling. These are all places that a victim, even though there's someone there, can feel alone, but yet they're not because of victim's advocates. So we've talked about Lily, we've talked about the stone. When I called my dad and asked how Lily was doing, he said, she's great. It's been eight years since the case. Lily has three kids and is married. She thrives because of people like Megan. Lily contributes 90% of her recovery to the fact that Megan was there. She called her every day and every night. How are you doing? What do you need? What do you need? Well, we've talked about the black stone. It adds that the most memorable, fi mem memorable thing about this is Megan had that black stone from day one, and in the final day of the hearing, when Megan had to testify, she had that stone, and she rubbed it, and she rubbed it, and she rubbed it through a seven-hour hearing. My dad said she left that stone on the table when she was done. It signaled the end. He has been sentenced. The appeal has been denied. There's nothing left to do. Well, you see, that stone was no longer flat. It had a ridge from where her thumb rubbed it over the course of a nine month long investigation. Because of Megan, people are able to thrive. Suicidal rates of sexual assault have gone down nearly 30% since every police department has hired multiple victims advocates. A police assigned victims advocate is there from day one till the end and even after. Megan still does a twice a year call to Lily. How are you doing? How are your kids? What do you need? Yet, yeah, Lily's great. But every once in a while she catches her and says, I need someone to talk to. Well, guess what? Megan's there. Megan arranges that. Megan is everything. And yet, we don't know about them. You don't see in the paper, Megan saves the day. You see, women is raped. We need to be appreciative of all the resources that are available to victims that you would never know about. Make it known, share the story, be aware.